Hey everybody, um, today I'm going to derive the canonical ensemble for you, um, which is a it's a probability distribution and it's basically a, it's a thermodynamic quantity. Uh, I'm going to do some other videos explaining what it is, but um, we're going to use Gibbs's method to derive it, um, which is a very, I think, a very uncommon method. You won't see much, I haven't seen much else on the internet that actually does this derivation. So I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, so basically, just to give a bit of a preamble, it's a derivation that involves just pure axioms about um, Newtonian matter and how it interacts. And it's very, very simple. And it's, it's, I think it's incredible that it can give um, such a complex result. OK, so let's start. Um, the first thing I want to do is draw a number line, just, just the x-axis. We're going to do this in one dimension. So on our x-axis, um, imagine that there are many particles, many, many particles, and they have masses. This might be m1. They have speeds. This could be v1, so on. Um, m2, v2, you know, maybe another particle here, and so on. So in this one-dimensional world, these Newtonian particles, they, they slide along this axis, and they, they collide with each other. It's a very restricted world. It's not that interesting. But it, it will be seen that this one-dimensional view is going to make the derivation easy. So the first thing we are going to say about this probability function, this P of E that's up here, and this, this guy is what we're going to be trying to derive, um, it is a true probability density function. So um, any course in probability will teach you that if you have a continuous probability function, and I'm going to write this integral in a probably a strange way, but if you integrate, such a function, okay? So if I integrate P, capital P, now the variables here, we're going to use P and Q. Sorry, we're going to use X and P. P and Q is an older notation, but X and P is just position, just so it's clear up front, position and momentum. And just if you in case you're not familiar, momentum is just mass times velocity. So we won't be using Vs. We'll be using lower little Ps and um, an X for position. But if we have this capital P probability distribution and we integrate over the entire, this is called a phase space, dP1, dX1, all the way up to dPn, dXn, where N, just to write something else out here, N, N is number of particles, okay? So the first thing we notice is that a probability distribution when integrated over all of the components is just going to be one. Um, this is going to turn out to be quite a useful fact because basically what we can do is when we start from here, what we learn is that in the most general case, P then must be a function of say X1, P1, all the way up to Xn, Pn. So we know that this probability function capital P is a function of all these variables. Now the next thing we can do is it's going to seem a bit obscure but we're going to find a, a line of reasoning here. We're going to take a differential of P and we're going to apply I think what some people call it's the partial differential chain rule. So a different total differential of P is going to be equal to partial dP by dx1 and then total differential x1 plus dp dx2, total differential dx2, and so on, all the way up to n, and then partial dp by partial dp1, momentum 1, um, dp1 plus partial dp by dp2, and then total dp2 all the way up to n. So this is obvious, and, and this any this is the any calculus course, you will see this as the differential chain rule. What's really interesting and I'm going to use a different color here, is that in physics, we know, well, what's dx1? dx1 is x1 dot dt. And dp1 is p1 dot dt. So we're going to substitute um, those definitions in. And what we get is dp. And I'm going to sort of factor this a little bit. I'm going to factor the dt's out. We still have our partial dp by dx1. And then we get um, x1 dot. And I'm actually, I'm going to skip some steps here. I'm just going to put dot, dot, dot. And then we get partial dp by dp1 
and then our p1 dot p1 dot and then all the way up to n and then the dt is comes outside so already we're starting to see an equation take shape here uh, i'm going to use another color there's another definition from physics that many of you are probably aware with um, and it is that well x what is x1 dot x1 dot is just speed so it's v1 and x1 dot which is the speed is actually the partial differential of the energy of the total system with respect to momentum for that particle this is kind of a given and i might talk about it a bit later but it's it's very useful we can see how we can plug this in and there is a sort of almost anti-symmetrical definition for p1 dot which some of you might recognize as the force it's the differential with mv with respect to time which is ma which is newton's laws um, so f1 is going to be equal the negative differential of the energy function with respect to position okay so back to our equation then we get capital dp and i'm going to bring down the dt on this side okay i'm going to do a little bit of sneaky stuff um, this summation we can represent using indices okay so i'm going to go i equals one to n and we get dp by dx i and then x i dot becomes partial de by partial dp i and then i'm going to leave some space because actually let's do this in the other color so it's super clear it's partial de by dp i and then it's actually minus i'm gonna i'm gonna do that right away it's minus minus should be red i guess if we're staying consistent minus partial d probability capital capital p with dpi times partial de by dxi all right so now we're really seeing something take shape here um this formula is not particularly useful or solvable on its own um, however there was a condition that gibbs came up with and the condition is that the, the differential with or i should say the derivative the total derivative of probability with respect to time is zero and he called this statistical equilibrium we will see why this is important in a second okay so this was gibbs um, 1902 he released a book on statistical mechanics it it is pretty much the authoritative text or the original text on the subject what what does this mean um to be honest i don't really know it's it's a complicated thing we've already easily seen that the probability function p is uh, certainly a function of the position and momenta and the position and momenta are clearly functions of time as we've even seen here we've defined them so how can this total der derivative be zero um, I might do another video and talk about it, but for now, let's follow the implication of this. Let's follow the implication. And what we get is um, the sum from i equals 1 to n on partial dp by dx1, partial de by dp1, minus partial dp by dpi, and then partial the energy with respect to position, all equals zero now there is a solution to this and i'm going to tell you what it is i'm not going to solve it but um convince yourself it's true okay and i'll give you an example in a second of how to do that but what you get is the probability is a function of e it's going to be some constant times e to the negative b and then energy so this um basically is the form we were looking for now to, okay so to convince yourself this is true take a take a simple energy function okay take a maybe a um, one particle system where you have a constant a1 p1 squared plus b1 um, x1 okay so where this is like your um, kinetic energy and this is your potential energy take this function and do these derivatives with this probability distribution you will see that it is zero so the, the answer is this 
this differentiation is correct and this is the value. Okay, so this is pretty much what we're going for. We do have to clarify a couple things. Well, what's A? Because this is a probability density function, we actually know um, A is also called one, it's one over the partition function. And if it were discrete, so I'm just going to write this in discrete variables, imagine pro the probability is discrete. It's basically going to be a sum. It's a normalization factor. This, this A is a normalization factor. It's the sum of negative BE, okay, or B epsilon. And basically, it's a normalizing factor such that when you plot this curve, when you have P at zero, you're going to, obviously, it's a, ne a ne negative exponential. But P at zero is P zero equals A. It has to ensure that the probability at zero energy is not one, because you have to be able to integrate over this whole thing, right? You gotta, you gotta integrate over the whole thing to get one. It's a density function. Okay, so that takes care of A. And then B, um, it turns out is one over KT. And this is, we can look at this as sort of a definition. Um, there's measurement that, can, that we can do to correlate these values with the theoretical results. But um, the answer we were trying to show was this. Um, and we can see pretty quickly with some manipulation that this, this result is not difficult to obtain. Basically, um, F is the, I think the Hemholtz energy or the Gibbs, Gibbs free energy, something like that. Um, it's just a term, right? And we will, I'm going to do another video to talk about that. Um, and then basically just use rules of exponents. So you get E, F over KT, E, negative epsilon over KT, and this guy is just equal to A, which is just equal to 1 over Z. So um, that's it. That's, this is the, um, the formula we were going for, and that is the Gibbs derivation, just using very, very simple axioms of um, Newtonian particles to get this probability density function. Um, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. If, if you guys like this stuff, please comment on it.